Hello everyone, I'm back with a new video and in this one I'll be talking about cheap capture cards that work in Linux. I'll be talking about these two cards, you can get them on eBay and similar websites for usually under $20 for the USB 2 version and the USB 3 version you can get for under $25 generally. They are not branded in any way but uh, let's take a look at what the boxes and the packaging looks like. The USB 2 version comes in a box like this, and inside is the capture card itself, a manual and a CD. The housing of the capture card is actually made of metal, so it feels very premium, and it definitely feels like it costs significantly more than $20. The USB 3.0 capture card comes in a box like this and inside is a manual, a CD and the capture card itself. This one is made of plastic but it still feels very reasonably built and when using these capture cards neither one of them gets uh, too hot to the point of uh, being uncomfortable to hold. Let's take a look at these two USB capture cards. Let's run LSUSB. And here we can see this one just shows up as macro silicon. That's the USB 2 and the USB 3 capture card shows up as macro silicon USB video. Let's take a look at the CD that comes with them. This is the USB 2.0 version and there is only a Windows driver on the CD. So let's take a look at the USB 3.0 capture card. And this one comes with a catalog and Shenzhen We Star Technology Company Limited. So it looks like that's the manufacturer, at least of the USB 3.0 version, uh, guessing uh, by the fact that they both say macro silicon, uh, that's the manufacturer of the chip on them. And if we scroll down, we can find the capture card right here, video capture. And even though it doesn't look exactly the same, I'm guessing that that's the, that's the card. The model is C1U30. And here are all the resolutions it can capture, frame rates, and all the details. So that's that, and let's move on. So here we have Ubuntu 20.04 with OBS installed. And we'll go ahead and add our USB 2.0 capture card. So add and video capture device. And here we go. So by default, it defaults to YUIV resolution. I think the 1080, that's the default resolution for it anyway. Frame rate. By default under YUIV, it's capped at five frames per second. So let's see what we can do about that and the uh, color range, let's change it to full and turn off buffering. So let's see what happens. Here we have the Witcher. It looks reasonable, but it's being captured at five frames per second. So let's see what we can do about that. And in order to capture it at a higher frame rate, we can go right here and change the video format to one of the emulated ones, let's say YV12, and change the frame rate to 30. And now it should be much better. And if you have problems, uh, like uh, seeing a black screen when you change it to a different video format or image being the image being frozen. What you might need to do is just restart your machine. Uh, that happened to me a couple times where just restarting it would fix these issues for me. And if you want to see how this card performs, so this is Witcher, just looking around. So yeah, not bad for uh, $17 I paid for it. Then let me show you how it works when I connect my camera to it over HDMI.
for those of you who want to do 60 frames per second, you might have to change the resolution to 720 and at 720 it can do 60 frames per second just fine. So the capture card works I would say really well, especially for the price you can get it I think for as low I've seen it on eBay for $12 or something like that if you are willing to wait for the shipping from China. So for that much money it works exceptionally well. Sometimes it can be a little finicky, but I think all capture cards have their moments. And for this price it works very reasonably well. Usually if something doesn't work I had to reset, restart my computer. Then it more or less fixed itself. Other than that, maybe you need to tweak some of the settings right here in order to get it to do what you want. But yeah, a very good capture card for a very reasonable price. So here I have the USB 3.0 capture card. I'll add it and change the resolution to 1080 and frame rate maxes out at five, five frames per second again. So let's see. And we can see it's fairly choppy. So if we change it to, let's say, YV12, we still need to change the frame rate to 30. And now it's not capturing anything. So let's try BRG and let's see what happens. Uh, nothing, no input. So it's frozen. Let me try this. It's still frozen. So what we'll do, we will restart our machine that does the capture. And now everything is working after the restart. Set to YU12 emulated resolution. We can do 1080, color range full, 30 frames per second. The text and icons are kind of distorted. And under Linux, this capture card doesn't capture 1080 very well. 720 works fine, but 1080 tends to be, by default, it tends to be kind of distorted. Under Windows, it actually works fine. So let's change it to 720 and everything looks better. So Witcher is actually running at 1080. So it's not as bad when it comes to graphics, but text can be really distorted. So looks reasonable. Let's go inside. And we can see again, things look normal, not bad. We can change it to 720 just to see what happens. And let me change it to uh, 60 frames per second. So this is 720 and 60 frames per second. Okay, so now let me try my camera and let's see the quality of that. Both of these capture cards offer a great value. They both work really well under Windows. Under Linux, I would say that the USB 2.0 capture card is less finicky than the USB 3.0 version. So if you plan to use it under Windows to mainly capture your gameplay, you might want to maybe decide to go with the USB 3.0 version. If you want to mainly use it in Linux, the USB 2.0 version might be better. Some of these issues, maybe if they become really popular, there might be maybe a new driver released for them, maybe a community driver or something, and all of these issues will be resolved. But uh, for the price, you can't really go wrong with either one of them. And yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.